Russia and Ukraine split mainland Europe into a battlefield. Soldiers of the Russian Airborne Forces, part of the Collective Security Treaty Organization, CSTO, Peacekeeping Force, board an armored personnel carrier at Kolodsky Airfield before flying to Kazakhstan, in the Moscow region, Russia. The CSTO decided to work after the collective peacekeeping to Kazakhstan at the relevant request by Kazakh President Kasim Jomar Tokayev. Troops will be deployed in a limited time for the situation on the European continent to become a battlefield if Russia and Ukraine engage in an open military confrontation. High tension on the border of the two countries, which was followed by the buildup of troops and heavy weapons, worried many parties. A senior EU diplomat described the region as getting closer to open war, the first time since the end of the war between the Balkan states of the former Yugoslavia. The warning was delivered in relation to Moscow, with its massive military buildup on the Ukrainian border, there is a real fear that Europe could be heading for its worst crisis in decades. But it will not be entirely focused on the prospect of a long and drawn-out ground war with Russia over Ukraine power, let alone the money, or popular support in the country for the war. EU Kremlin about the extreme consequences if military actions in neighboring countries. Sweden deployed troops over the weekend to the strategically important island of Gotland, located in the Baltic Sea. Meanwhile Denmark strengthened its presence in the region a few days earlier, rising tensions have also sparked a recreation in Finland and Sweden as to whether they should now join NATO. But on the whole the West, Washington, NATO, Britain, and the European Union, there is no possibility of just a conventional war over Ukraine, but much more. That is Moscow trying to divide and destabilize Europe, to destabilize the continent's balance of power as the Kremlin wants. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki told last year that the West needed to wake up from its geopolitical slumber about Moscow's intentions. Fellow EU countries will say that they have now come to their senses and smell them very strongly. However, as is often the case in foreign policy matters, EU leaders are far from agreeing on what action to take. Moscow denies planning a military invasion despite massive troops on its border with Ukraine. But Russia has issued a security list to NATO. It loudly blamed the alliance for undermining regional security. Vladimir Putin emphasized, among other things, demanding that NATO ban Ukraine and other ex-Soviet countries from being members of the NATO categorically rejects these demands. Three meetings held over the past week or so, between Russia and its Western allies, have failed to reach much agreement. What Vladimir Putin will do next is unclear. But the West, which believes the Kremlin is investing too much in its public maneuvers in Ukraine, is urging it to step down now, without any choice. The US government and Joe Biden meanwhile waited anxiously for a strong European Union EU, decision. A number of EU countries are talking about the impact of sanctions on their respective economies. Brussels usually discusses burden sharing, but the outcome of the negotiations may not please everyone. There is also extensive in the EU countries about the supply of gas from Russia, especially considering the already high prices for European households this winter. Washington says it is looking at ways to reduce the impact on energy supplies. Washington insists they can waste no more time, as the Kremlin is considering a false flag operation, drawing a plan to take the option of fabricating pretexts for invasion, i.e. blaming Ukraine for Russia's impending attack. Not so long ago, the Minister of Foreign Affairs had a bigger European war than any in the last 30 years could happen. The United States is Ukraine's strongest backer in its efforts to prevent a new attack by Russia, which has already been carried out on a large number of borders with Ukraine. Joe Biden will add U.S. troops to Eastern Europe to bolster broader NATO efforts to protect allied nations with Russia and Ukraine. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin puts 8,500 U.S. troops on high alert and ready to deploy for NATO missions if ordered. The troop deployment will be part of a broader NATO effort. Other NATO countries can also donate troops to Russian President Vladimir Putin to prevent the invasion of neighboring countries. The latest shipment of military aid United States, US, has arrived in the country. We had just approved $200 million in security assistance for the Ukrainian armed forces. They arrive as we speak, including lethal assistance in the form of javelin and ammunition for Ukrainian frontline defenders. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby said about 8,500 troops are in the midst of being alerted to a ready-to-deploy order so they can replenish NATO's rapid response force, should the alliance call on them to step up. However, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin also wants an undisclosed troop number to be prepared for eventuality. What's happening now is to prepare them in a shorter time frame, 
Kirby said, 